Hey you, what is up, how's it going? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how you can get a job as a Python developer in 2018 and what skills you should focus on. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about very, very practical things, and I'm not gonna give you just like fluffy advice. I'm gonna give you specific stuff, some book recommendations as well, and what are the most important things you need to focus on so you can build your skills as well as turn it into getting a job, okay? Whether it's full-time freelancing, whatever have you. All right, my friend, tip number one. Build your GitHub repository. Now, does it have to be GitHub Kazi? No, my friend, you can use Bitbucket, you can use GitLab, whatever you want to host your code online, but please don't use Dropbox or send your code through zip files because nobody wants to see that. So start on GitHub early on, learn Git version control early on, okay? Because those are gonna be very, very key skills when it comes to you landing a job. And you wanna learn these skills, and these skills are fundamental for like any programming language, okay? And once you learn these, this is what shows other people that you care about working with other human beings. Because you don't want to learn version control when you're working on some giant project. You want to be already messing up in it and learning through that trial and error while you're just a beginner. So by the time you're working on more advanced projects, you already got the Git version control and putting your code on GitHub repository down and you can actually put some good stuff there. Cool? All right, that's number one. Second thing I will tell you is you should follow pep style guidelines if you're writing Python code and that you should focus a lot on making your code readable because this demonstrates you're not just coding for yourself just so your head can understand it, you're coding for other people as well. Okay, think about it like this. I don't know about you, but when I am taking notes, I'm a terrible note taker and in the meantime, I'll take these notes and they'll make sense to me. But then later when I come back and look at these notes, I'm like, what does this mean? So that knowledge that I got at one point is actually completely useless to me when I look at it later. And what do you think happens to somebody else who, like if I can't understand the freaking notes, do you think somebody else who's reading my notes will learn from it and get knowledge out of it? Of course not, right? So take notes in a way where other people can understand them and also you can understand it completely clearly even if you looked at it at some point later. Because if you ever have any experience working with a project that you had to maintain for two weeks, a month, two months, three months, you will know, or you know, a year, you will know how important it is to write readable code so you can go back to it and understand what it is that you were doing. Okay, because if you don't and you have to refigure it all out and you have to scratch it all up again, not good. And the other people who are gonna be looking to hire you, the recruiter, they're gonna see your code and they'll be like, uh-uh, this person isn't thinking about working with other people, he's just thinking about himself. Number three, learn the skill of documentation. Your code should not just have Python in it, it should have some human language in it as well because ultimately you're writing code for human beings. So you need to write a lot of documentation. If you're in the United States, definitely the documentation should be in English, all right? So meaning like what each function does, what each class is doing, how is your code working and documenting it, very important and then having a readme file of your GitHub repository. So how does your code actually work? And that shows people that, hey, look, this person is so considerate that he has a readme guide. So anybody who goes through his project can immediately understand how things are working. You wanna go crazy on the skill of documentation, putting your code on GitHub, and making your code very readable, okay? So pep, still, pep eight style guidelines and all of that. Some recommendations, other recommendations I'm gonna give you to improve your skill set is read other people's code, all right? Now, I don't know about you, but when people used to tell me this and I would go online and read code, I'd be like, what the hell does this mean? I don't understand any of this. What you need to do is read code around your skill level. That's what people don't tell you. 
okay? So sometimes what I would do, for example, is let's say I was taking a course uh, in Coursera, okay, or Udacity.com. These are online MOOCs, massive online whatever courses. The idea behind them is that once you're going through it, right, what you can do is like, let's say there's assignment one that you're doing. There's gonna be somebody, somebody in the world who's also done this assignment and decided to put it on their GitHub. You can go to that person's GitHub and after you giving this assignment a try, you can look at how they coded it. So if they're a beginner, you'll be able to read and actually understand their code if you're a beginner as well. Don't read like some crazy advanced library because it's not gonna make any sense to you, okay? I'm gonna be honest, reading some advanced people's code makes no sense to me to this day, okay? But I read around my skill level. That's an important thing, nobody talks about it. They're just like, developers are like, yeah, just go read code. Yeah, okay, good luck, good freaking luck just reading any code. So find something that's around your skill level and learn from that, okay? If you make a, a rock, paper, scissors game in Python or a tic-tac-toe game, then look that up on GitHub and see if somebody else has made a, a rock, paper, scissors game that you can understand and then read that code or go on Stack Overflow and read questions to some simple, uh, answers to some simple questions and read their code. So you being able to read code is a very important skill that you need to cultivate. And if you're more advanced, you know, look into Kenneth Reitz and read his code in the request library, which is one of the most phenomenal libraries in Python. And uh, it's called, you know, HTTP for humans. And it's him, that's like the best physical manifestation of somebody who truly understands what it means to write code for human beings. And if you look at his GitHub repository and his documentation and just his style of coding, you'll be like, wow, this is awesome. So that's another tip I'll give you on improving your skill and what skills are the most important. Other tips I'm gonna give you are read a book called Fluent Python, especially if you're around that intermediate level. Almost died there actually. Uh, read books on this because a book like Fluent Python will teach you a lot of Pythonic code. So this way you don't just look like somebody who was developing yesterday in C++ and decided to work in Python today. That shows your ability with Python. So for example, you know, instead of using regular lists for something, you can use list comprehensions, okay? Somewhere where you need to use a generator or yield instead of wasting a lot of your uh, you know, speed of your code by not using a yield or a generator. A lot of these more advanced skills, you're gonna learn through something like you know, more advanced books. So read something that gives you, gives you the ability to write more Pythonic code. Tip number 23, I, I lost count at this point, okay? But the reason why I'm giving you these is because a lot of these are very tangible and you can actually get on them right away. And before I actually move on from Kenneth Reads, recently I learned something new. I was looking up Kenneth Reads and I looked up one of his recent essays on uh, project structure for Python. And he talks about how should you structure your code. And he says something about Django that I actually didn't know. And he says a lot of Django developers create their repositories in the wrong way and it causes a lot of confusion and poor naming conventions, so he gives this tip on how to not do it. I'll actually put it right over here, the screenshot of uh, the essay that I read. And I learned something new right away. And now, as a Django developer, right, if I have that on my GitHub repository with the tip that he said, when somebody who's in the industry reads my code now, will be like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. Another person I will tell you about is, uh, you should look into this guy, Raymond. I believe his last name is Hedinger or Hedinger. I don't know how to pronounce it, but, Incredible dude, I've listened to so many of his talks. Fascinating, entertaining, incredibly intelligent, and just the way that he speaks is just so eloquent. And he will like make you laugh and show you like really Pythonic stuff. And he's one of the people who's added so much to the Python library and uh, you know, so many powerful contributions to Python. You should listen to his talks and definitely l listen to his one on transforming code and like it's something like transforming code um, and idiomatic Python. Okay, so I'll put a link to that somewhere in this description, in the YouTube description, so you can watch that video there. Learn from that and actually then go back to your code and actually turn it into more and more Pythonic code. Put that up on your GitHub repository. 
And in summary, here's what I'm gonna say. There's no wrong way. There's only the right way or you can go through. Go right and then go through something. <laughs> Anything you want. Wow, all right. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. As always, this is Kazi. I love your face, and I'll see you in the next video.